about building freaking hype for a film that everyone is looking forward to. I remember sitting in an obscure theater in Noida in December of 2018 as one of my subscribers had recommended me to watch KGF and talk about it. Slated to be Kannada cinema's biggest film in history and backed by the pan-India vision of XL Entertainment, at the helm of affairs having visionary producers like Farhan Akhtar and Ritesh Sidwani, that introduce everyone to a star like Yash and an exemplary creator like Prashant Neel. The reason why I mention where I went for the movie is because most of the people in the theatre had little to no context of what they could expect. And a film produced from Karnataka having the ability to develop cheering, gasps of shock and conclude with an applause is a testament to the fact that this film communicated beyond the language barrier and beyond the borders of the state. A film spanning over three decades on one hand showcasing the birth of a child symbolized in a way as the chosen one and on the other hand the inner workings of a gold empire which constantly changes due to egos, the hunger for power and control and backstabbing and deceit. We follow the journey of Rocky played by Yash, a man who has many flaws but has the aspirations of becoming more and more powerful. KGF Chapter 1 really stayed with me. The moments created between the labourers and the oppressive guards in the gold fields created a cinematic treat. The atmosphere of eeriness, fear and just sheer anticipation that anything can happen was so well crafted. Savages just wanting an excuse to execute a weak link from the workforce. Everyone being subservient until there is a moment of hope. Yash as the troubled yet stoic Rocky, the bloody nature and ruthlessness of brawls, showing you the gore of hammers getting flung or neck getting chopped off and of course Ramachandra Raju who plays the role of the menacing Garuda a perfect antagonist to combat a hero like Rocky this image right here this image created such pandemonium in theatres that no wonder everyone has been looking forward to what will follow now that Rocky is sitting on the throne. KGF Chapter 1 became the fourth highest grossing dubbed pan-India release after the Bahubali franchise and 2.0, grossing over 250 crores in revenue. KGF and its marketing team are a brilliant example of how to build a franchise. I've come to the conclusion that most of the properties owned by XL Entertainment really know how to keep the audience engaged even after months of the film releasing. This is both a combination of the perfect social media engagement with fans while at the same time periodic announcements of characters in the new world that would develop intrigue among the audience. A brilliant parallel by XL was the engagement they generated through Mirzapur with a similar model. What I absolutely appreciate also regarding the acquisition and what many creators especially of Tamil, Telugu and Kannada cinema have identified is that the model that has been followed for decades often takes away from the sense of ownership one has of their property. So the dated model would include a producer to release the film in either solely the original language in which it was shot, leading to producers coming in to buy the remake rights of the films if the film had a successful box office run. But a pan-India release and dubbing the film in several languages from the onset provides more stake for the original creators. Also from a creative and moral standpoint, it gives due credit to the original makers rather than a remake just mimicking the same model. Master starring Vijay and Vijay Setupati can be known as master all over India with these two actors rather than some odd recreated version with Hindi movie stars. KGF Chapter 2 would have released in 2020 if the pandemic did not hit the movie industry so hard. But I know very well it is only wise for the creators to play the waiting game for a film with such a humongous scale and possibly a venture which might turn out to be the biggest money maker of the year. The hype surrounding the film has not dissipated in any way. The audience is still engaged of how this world is going to get expanded and the new teaser of KGF Chapter 2 has already developed so much excitement among fans, both from its visual treatment and the introduction of new characters. The franchise model works in two ways in India, one with simply backs on the callback value of the title of the property. The world building in this category has nothing to do with the previous installments. Characters may change, relationships will be altered, these kind of franchises more or less have nothing to do with what they have previously done. And the changes that they provide in their world is the numerical in front of their movie title. So for example, brainless comedy franchises in the form of Houseful, Dhamal, Golmal, all of these films eventually develop into becoming just individual comedy films banking on the callback value of their title. The second franchise model which requires a sense of world building, attention to detail and a responsibility with the loyal audience that it has developed is where KGF lies, sitting with movies like Bahubali and international films like The Hunger Games that have to further develop the characters and the world the audience is already privy to. KGF that way has perfectly built the hype to extend the world we already fell in love with. 
The teaser provides the same sense of eeriness and dread that I absolutely loved in the first film. There is a new overlord in the Kolar gold fields in the form of Rocky and he has many allies as he methodically showcased that he was one of them. But with great power comes many foes and we see a combination of both rogue groups as well as politicians getting together to take down the man who is an inevitable threat. We left the first film when Prime Minister Ramika Sen issues a death warrant against Rocky. If you remember, we were given a glimpse of the supposedly dead uncle of Garuda named Adira, who had no motivation to sit on the throne until Garuda was there. Now that he is no more, we will see Sanjay Dutt's character take up arms to try and annihilate this new overlord. But I don't think the story can be this straightforward. If you remember the final scene of a gunshot transitioning to a blackout, I assume Yash will be captured. What's the point of building a story from a point where your protagonist already has absolute power? Adira and Garuda's younger brother will butt heads in my opinion for the throne of KGF as Yash will formulate a plan to take back KGF as he comes out of the shackles of isolation and is in Mumbai, leading to an absolute battle where he regains power only for Ramika Sen to deploy the Indian army to combat Yash and his empire. The teaser makes it very clear that chapter 2 will have a massive battle in its penultimate act, possibly also leading to the ultimate demise of our hero, leading to an emotional conclusion to a roller coaster ride we all signed up for. Let me know, are you excited for KGF2? What do you expect in chapter 2? And what did you absolutely love about the teaser?